Hi there and welcome back to my White Christmas tutorial series. Today is the time for project number 7 and it's going to be a 3D card. Creating 3D cards is quite addicting. It's a pleasure to see how a bunch of flat die cuts become a 3D scene. And of course, you can use this card as a mental piece decoration. To create the shape of the card, I'll be using Grand Arch 3D Card Die Set by Spellbinders. I have used the big outline die to create five panels out of black cardstock, and I have used two side piece dies to create those two pieces with slits, as well as two plain ones. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the long tabs from the plain side pieces. Then I'm going to switch to the big panels and I'm going to trim off those little tabs at the sides from two of the panels. Those are going to be the front and the back piece. They don't need the tabs. This rectangle shape of the card is very versatile and here you can see that the tabs are located closer to the bottom and that allows me to trim down the, the whole panel. So I'm trimming the panels to four and a half uh, inches to make them square. To create the scene inside the box, I'm going to use those three dies by memory box and uh, I have them die cut out of thick watercolor paper here. You can see that those dies also create a bigger frame that I'm also going to use later on. Those dies can be used individually or as a layering set. Before I assemble uh, the box, I'm going to add some smaller details. So here I have die cut the house out of silver metallic cardstock and I'm inlaying those two pieces into the house, securing them uh, with a piece of tape at the wrong side. So here is what it looks like. I'm also going to inlay a tiny door. Then I'm going to add some glitter on top of the roof and on top of the ground to make my scene a little bit more wintry. So I'm just applying some liquid glue, then I'm sprinkling uh, the white glitter on top and then I'm going to let it dry. I will add the glitter to all three die cuts. This scene can actually work for any season. Just trim off the smoke coming out from the chimney, add some color and you'll get a summer scene. As always, all the tools and products I'm using will be listed on my blog and in the description. Now I'm going to choose the matching square die. It should be the same size that the outer outline of uh, the frame. So I'm placing it on top of my panel, securing it with the tape, and then I'm going to take out the square opening. Four panels out of five should have those square openings. So to make them on uh, one and the same spot, I'm placing uh, the open frame on top of the plain panel, then I'm attaching the die right inside, it should fit in, and then I'm sending it through, and here I have uh, another die cut which is identical to the previous one. I will repeat the same process until I have um, all the frames open, except the back piece, which is going to be plain. The next step is scoring uh, the tabs at the side pieces. The score lines are already created by the die, I just have to press them down with the bone folder. I have already attached some double-sided tape to the tabs and now I'm uh, sticking them down onto the back piece. I should have trimmed the side pieces to four and a half inch size, just like I did with the panels, but it's not a problem, I can do it after I attach them. Then I'm trimming off the corners as well. Before assembling uh, the diorama, I'm going to add some glitter to the back piece. So I'm applying some white double-sided tape. Then I'm going to remove the liner and add my glitter on top. 
Of course, if you have some glitter paper at hand, you can use this as well. The next step is attaching all the white frames inside the black ones. So I'm flipping over both frames, placing the white one inside, and then I'm using some strips of black paper to hold two frames together. I'm attaching them at the wrong side. And this is when I realized that I've made a big mistake. I should have chosen the smaller square to cut out the openings in the black panels. And this way I could attach the white frames directly onto the black ones. But it's not a problem, you can also do it this way. I have assembled all three frames the same way. This last one is the front piece. And uh, actually I'm going to add the plain frame to it. I'm going to use one of the frames, this one has picket fence on it, and I'm going to trim off the scene inside and only leave the frame. I'm also going to attach it with the, the strips of black paper, but remember, you can avoid it just by choosing the right size square die. I have three leftover larger frames left from uh, the landscapes, and I'm going to use them as well. I'm just going to layer all three frames to make uh, a one-dimensional piece and I'm going to attach it on top of the front panel. One last step before assembling the box is adding a few stars to glittery background. I'm going to use my favorite metallic star confetti by Cat Scrappiness. And now let's start assembling the box. You can see that there are four slits in the panel, but I only have three inserts. That's not a problem, I'm just going to skip the last one and start attaching the panels uh, from the second one from the back. I'm inserting the little tabs into the slits and then pulling the panel down slightly until it locks into place. Then I'm flipping the box over and attaching all the panels at the remaining side as well. The last piece to attach is the front panel. So I'm peeling off the liner, aligning it with the tabs and pressing it down to stick. I'm also going to use the plain side pieces that I've die cut at the very beginning. I'm applying some adhesive onto them and sticking them to the side of the box to cover up the small tabs. And my project is finished. This card is also totally mailable. When folded up, it fits into 6x6 envelope. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, thanks for watching and have fun playing with your dice!